We're in the final stretch. We're about 50 trading days away, about 70 calendar days from the US presidential election. And we could see some pretty wild, some even dangerous things happening with our investments. Now in this video, I'm gonna explain what's happening, what the potential dangers are, and what you need to do to both grow your wealth and protect your wealth. I'm gonna give you the exact details that you can use to protect it through this dangerous time. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Moss. I believe that the only security we have in life is for us to take responsibility for ourselves because the system is broken. No one's coming to save you, and that's why you have to learn to make your money, grow your money, protect your money on your own. Now, if you agree, you wanna hear more about these topics, you want more people to hear about these topics, make sure to click the like button right now, and then of course hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you're notified every time I put new videos out. Now today, I got a lot of ground to cover, all right? I wanna set the stage, I wanna tell you what to watch for, and at the end, like I said, I'm gonna give you the actionable information, the actionable advice that you can take to navigate this. Um, so make sure you stick around to the end. Now, also, I just want to mention again, I am running the $1,000 Bitcoin giveaway. I'm going to run that for a one more week. Now, I get offered almost every day to do promotions on this channel, which I don't do. But I decided because I believe in Bitcoin, I want to put it back in everybody's hands. What I'll do is I'll take the money I was offered and give it right back to you. Why not, right? Why not give it back to you? So don't miss the chance to win $1,000 in Bitcoin and hardware wallets and some Bitcoin education as well. Um, see the link in the description of this video um, to go register for that and to get all the full details and all that. All right. Now, like I said in the intro, we are in a dangerous time. Now, we're in dangerous time both in the short term, short time frames, and in the much larger time frames. And we're gonna talk about both, and then I'm gonna focus in on what we can do in the short term. Uh, but right now, just know that it seems that all our words have like lost their meaning. Uh, our words have lost their meaning, or our words have different meanings than they used to, and this is causing big problems on its own. But it's also one of the reasons why these words are being changed that's a much bigger problem. Now today, people are screaming all kinds of things with mixed meaning. So for example, we have people screaming against fascism, but yet they're being fascist in their actions, right? We have people screaming against racism, but being racist in their actions. Um, and today, you know, in our money, we have people screaming against the dangers of monopolies while they're being monopolies right? It's weird. Everything's backwards. So if the words have lost their meanings, or maybe the words just have different meanings today, then what do you call an economy of monopolies without any competition or any regulatory restraints? If that's not a monopoly, what is it? What do you call an economy of monopolies that control both the buying and selling in the markets that they control? What do you call monopolies with the power to commit what I call legalized fraud, and then turn and use those profits to buy political influence. Now, these monopolies use black box algorithms that are all powerful, right? But they're completely hidden from the public scrutiny. And then for another play on words, the powers that be call these monopolies capitalism. And they tell us that capitalism is bad and that capitalism needs to end. Now, if these monopolies over the economy are not monopolies, then what are they, right? But whatever you call it, it certainly isn't capitalism. Now, just because you call something a certain word doesn't mean that it's so, all right? It doesn't mean it's true. Just because you call it that, you have to examine the facts. Now, capitalism requires competition and market transparency in order to price capital, labor, risk, credit, goods, services, all of those things. Capitalism is always a market of willing participants willing being the key word. Capitalism is always a win-win scenario. So if you're in a situation where you're not seeing those, then guess what? It's not capitalism, even if they want to call it that. And the black box monopolies I mentioned above, they're the death of capitalism as it eliminates competition and it eliminates market transparency. So who are these monopolies dominating and What's happening with the American economy today? Well, of course, you probably guessed it. It's big tech and their hidden technology and what I call the black box monopolies. Now, they've taken away a huge chunk of the free market system, free market, aka capitalism. And sure, they give us the pretense of capitalism. They put a slick cover on it, some PR, some press releases, uh, and you know, all of a sudden the Silicon Valley model 
looks like it's capitalism, but it's not. Now, the Silicon Valley model is actually very simple if you understand how it works. So what they do to achieve monopoly power and scale their network effects is they scale as fast as they can, scale the network effects, and then they buy out all their potential competitors with stock that they printed out of thin air. You see, once the monopoly is achieved from this fake money, from buyers, sellers, and users, then they're all captive to the big tech monopolies. And the monopolies get bigger, and they get bigger, and then they use any of the profits they receive to buy back the shares they created from thin air. And they use that to, guess what? Eliminate even more competition, which then boosts the wealth of the insiders all the way to the moon. And of course, since share buybacks um, are legal today, they used to be illegal. They're legal today, but to me, it looks like legalized fraud. And I think this is the most obvious, uh, well, at least to a growing number of people, that the destruction these big tech monopolies cause to society, it's massive. But the political power they purchase through big government lobbying protects them from any limits of free markets, right? Free markets would stop that, but no, 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 no. They lobby to protect themselves from the free market, to strengthen their monopolies, allowing their platforms to control the flow of data, including political content and advertisements. Now, these monopolies, platforms that control the flow of data, news, narratives, they're basically privatized totalitarianism, all right? They're pretending to be capitalism. And like all totalitarian monopolies, big tech now claims you can't limit us because now you depend on us. We're too big to fail, they say. So in other words, big tech is now too centralized and too powerful to submit to. That's what they're telling us. All right, now, it's a neat trick, of course, right? Enrich the super wealthy, uh, the investor class with stock buybacks, uh, juiced up stock valuations, which they use then to buy their loyalty and political pull with these um, outsized gains to keep growing their monopoly bigger and bigger, which of course continues to push this out of reach of any public scrutiny or it, you know any way they can to limit their profiteering and like I said, they're privatized totalitarianism. Now, when you stop and think about it, the fact that our society and our economy are in now a privatized totalitarian by these giant big tech monopolies, it's kind of straight out of a science fiction book, right? I think I've seen lots of movies growing up about this day and age where these big tech companies basically become the leaders of the world. And it's kind of where we're at right now. We're seeing a blend of it, but we can definitely see the trend of where it's going. Whatever they want to be the thing is the thing. Whatever they want to get us worked up about, we get worked up about. Whatever they want us to see as being real, then it's real. But it's all done through manipulation. And just like all powerful monopoly regimes, you have to be careful because if you speak out on anything they disagree with, you're censored, you're suspended, or you're maybe even outright deplatformed. And again, now this is right out of a science fiction novel, right? Now for some, losing access to these tech monopoly platforms, it's not the end of the world, right? You lost your social media, big deal. But to be honest, this fear even limits what I say. And I, even writing this video, I have to worry about what I'm saying. There's a lot of other things I'd like to say, but I don't. And today, there's a growing number of people that depend on these very platforms to get their customers, to get their sales, to get the revenues for their businesses. I mean, everybody's online. You know, we used to advertise in the phone book, but that's not gonna cut anymore. Nobody uses a phone book, right? If you can't advertise online, you're effectively demonetized. Your ability to earn money, basically to compete in the marketplace is done. And when you think about it, when your ability to compete in the market is done and you can't even join into the conversations in the town squares anymore, then basically you're out, right? So basically to be a member of society today, you basically have to give in to big tech's totalitarian platforms. And worse, today these big tech monopolies don't just own the platforms, not just the platforms where we create content, they own the platform in our mind. They control what we see, what we buy, what we sell. They control what the algorithms collect, what the algorithms sell for us. Now to everyone who wants to influence what we see, buy, sell, all those believe the privatized totalitarianism of the big tech platforms are called capitalism, but they're not. We've all been brainwashed by big tech's pretense of what capitalism is. But again, just because they call it that doesn't mean that's what it is. And just because totalitarianism and fraud are now 
what they call legal, doesn't mean that they're not evil, all right? It's no secret that many of these big tech communities hate Trump, all right? I'm gonna bring Trump up. We're not gonna dive into politics, but of course, it's no secret that they hate Trump. They go out and say it all the time, right? They've come out and said it already, uh, but this video isn't about Republicans. It's not about Democrats. I'm not gonna dive into that. This is about our money and where we need to be paying attention to to protect our wealth. This is so that we can win regardless of what happens, all right? So we have to understand that these tech companies are basically driving the stock market these days. And the ironic thing is that their continued success could help hand Trump the election, all right? So they don't like him, but their success is helping him, which brings me to the danger of our investments and what we need to watch out for. Um, and then we're gonna discuss exactly what we should be doing. Now, like I said, it's no secret, uh, a lot of these things, it's out in the open, all right? So it's not hard to put this together. I'm not trying to reveal some big conspiracy here. It's no secret that a strong economy and a strong stock market are gonna be good for Trump. You look at history, whenever there's a good market, the incumbent president always do well. And it's also no surprise that a weak economy and a weak stock market are good for Biden. Again, history tells us that, all right? It's always easier for someone to win when the, when the market's bad, because they can say, hey, it's bad, I can make it better, right? Now. It's no secret, as I said, history shows this. I've talked about it, other analysts talk about it. Um, and even at the Democratic con uh, convention that's going on right now, they're continuing to hammer on the fact that the economy is bad and it's Trump's fault, all right? Now, again, I'm not saying there is or isn't. I know a lot of you people can't hear anything once I mention Trump, but please pay attention because you can't understand what's happening with the money unless you understand what's happening with politics as well, all right? So I'm not trying to dive into the debate here and I'm not gonna get into any of those facts or things, but since the pandemic and the economy, like I said, the markets have completely crashed, obviously. The stock markets have rebounded really, really quick like a V-shaped recovery. And so anybody who's watching this knows why that's happened. It's because the Fed, the Federal Reserve has printed money. They've printed massive amounts of money. They printed about $6 trillion. Now as investors, We've been right into huge profits. In my private group, we've been crushing it. I know a lot of people that have been watching this channel have been sending me messages saying how well they've been doing. Basically, anyone who's been in the market has done really well. And we're all playing what's known as the Fed put, right? As long as the Fed's gonna pump money in, we're gonna keep riding it higher and higher and higher. But the question is, will they? Will the Fed continue to print money? Now, do those that control these things want the markets to be good? They know that if the markets are good, they're helping Trump. They know that if the markets are bad, they're helping Biden. So now they're kind of stuck into this uh, rock in a hard place, if you will, all right? So let's dig into the facts a little bit, right? So after this massive money printing, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has been, uh, it, it blew up and now it's been slowly going back down. It's declined over the past 11 weeks. It's gone from about 7.165 trillion on uh, June 3rd, and now it's down to about 6.9 trillion on August 12th. So it's going down just a little bit. Really, it's more or less kind of stained put. It's kind of like ideal and neutral. But in this bubble economy that we're in, if we're not continuing to push forward, then we're actually falling backwards. Now, we can see this exact same neutral stance from the Fed, um, and it helped to set up that late February crash that we had. So when the Fed's not taking action, the market's going to crash. So what's going to happen here? What should we do? Well, this is where things are going to get interesting for us to observe, okay? There's a lot of things that we're watching at. I don't like to make predictions, I like to look at probabilities. And so these are the things that we need to be watching and paying attention. Now, if you're not new to the channel, if you watch the channel, you know that I love history. I love history because uh, for one, it's fascinating to me. Uh, maybe I'm a nerd, but I just like it, all right? But I also love it because it helps us to know where we're going. So if we dip back in history just for a minute, uh, it, helps us can, it, it can help us figure this out. So uh, we're gonna dip back in history right now and we're gonna go all the way back to the days of the Roman Empire. Now, I love to study the Roman Empire because it's a perfect example of the United States, all right? They built an empire, the United States built an empire. The Roman Empire fell, the United States Empire is following in their footsteps. Now, there's a historian, Michael Grant, and he tells us that a key cause of the crash of the Roman Empire was created, or I should say was caused by political disunity in the, in the elites. Disunity. They weren't un. They they weren't unified. They couldn't agree. Now, of course, we don't need to go back in history to tell us that a nation divided will always fall. 
We already know that, but that's exactly what happened um, in the Roman Empire, and it's exactly what we're seeing right now. But back to the book, um, Grant describes that this dynamic that led to the fall of the Roman Empire, um, so it's a great read, but we're starting to see the same thing happen in the U.S. Of course, everybody who's paying attention can see the vision that's happening. So let's take a look at a couple of the things that I see. So, of course, we have a huge and and fast growing gap between rich and poor. Okay, check. Uh, There's a credibility gap between mainstream media and the big tech platforms. Okay, check. Uh, We have the tech titans and the neoliberal elites um, starting to fight in war. Okay, check. Um, We have this new cancel culture that, you know, if I don't get my way, then I'm going to block you. I'm going to delete you. Okay, check. And while they fight over all this, we have to go back to the Federal Reserve right? The Federal Reserve is the one goose in the market. And their only job, really what the Federal Reserve is trying to do is not, not keep the market from crashing, supposedly. But what they're really trying to do is keep the US dollar as the world's reserve asset, okay? So the Fed's constant intervention in the stock market is only useful if it's serving to protect the US dollar's position in the world's economy. But the Federal Reserve and the US dollar's power, it's survived plenty of market crashes, right? It's done that. So the question is, will they be willing to let the market crash and crush Trump's reelection hopes? Or will they serve their big tech monopoly, their Wall Street masters, and keep the, um, keep the printing presses going? Um, if they keep the printing presses going for Buffett, for Bezos, things like that, then they could keep their precious billions. So who are they going to serve? They're caught between warring factions, which is the interesting part. And like I said, we're only about 50 trading days away, about 70 calendar days before the election. So the deep state camps are seeking basically to destroy Trump's re-election campaign. Um, and so we're at this do or die place. So either reverse the stock market melt up and begin the crash to ruin Trump all the way into late October, or let the markets do good and basically hand Trump a gift, potentially give him the gift of the V-shaped recovery, which might be enough for him to win. Now, we don't know what's gonna happen. We could crash going into the election or continue to stay up. But what we do know is the next 11 weeks is gonna become, well, interesting to say the least, right? So the bigger question, and hopefully you've stuck around this long to find out is what are we going to do about this? All right. So I've laid it out. I've told you what we're watching, but what are we going to do? Now, as investors, there's a saying, um, if you're not familiar with it, you should memorize it. And basically it's let your winners run and cut your losers short. All right. So with all this danger on the horizon, you need to be ready for anything. Some people just want to pack up their toys and go home. Others want to stay in the market. They say it's too risky. So we don't know. So we need to be prepared for anything. So go back to that quote. All right. Now the Fed could very easily continue to pump the market up. They don't want the market to crash. They keep pumping the market. So if that's the case, then we want to stay in the market. We want to stay in it. We want to continue to get those rides. I know everything seems overpriced right now, but it can go to levels higher than we could ever possibly imagine. But at the same time, we got to be careful. We have to be diligent because it could crash at any moment. So staying in is easy, right? You just stay in the market. You just stay long. But how do you be careful? How do you be ready for a crash? And that's what I want to talk to you about. So what we want to do, first of all, is we want to be tactically prepared. So that means we don't want to just be back and be passive. We want to be active. We want to be tactically in our market to protect ourselves. So with your exposure, you need to look at your allocations and your position sizing. How much do I have in certain areas? Now, if you lower your allocation to growth stocks, for example, then you can limit your risk to your total portfolio. So let's say, for example, you have 50% of your assets into growth and you have, let's say, 10% in cash. Well, what you could do is instead of putting 50% in growth, you could lower that to 30 and then you could increase your cash to like 30%, all right? You also need to be using stop losses and trailing stops. That way, if the market turns down, it's gonna close out your positions, it's gonna lock in your profits for you, all right? Now, you also wanna be careful where you set those stop losses. You wanna make sure you don't get you know stopped out too early right before the market turns back around. So you wanna be careful where you do that, uh, but stop losses are a great way to lock in profits as the market stops crashing. And finally, the other thing that you can do is, is you can hedge your long positions. Now you can do that by simply um, shorting the market. You could just go to one of the indexes. There's tons of reverse ETFs. So I can just buy a reverse ETF, which will short the market. Um, So if the market goes down, 
I make money, I lose money on my longs, but I make money on my shorts, so I'm hedging that. Another way to do that is I can buy the volatility index, um, which also works the same way. So I'm losing money on my longs, but I'm making money at the same time, and it just offsets any potential losses that you might have if that crash happens, all right? But either way, you need to stay vigilant. You need to pay attention. You have to be ready to act as needed. You need to be paying attention to these signs so you can move and you can react because either way, we are going to be in a wild ride for the next couple of months. Now, don't forget, enter to win the $1,000 Bitcoin giveaway. Um, the link is in the description below with all the details, sign up for that and whatever, my gift back to you. Um, but before you go, before you click on that link, let me know what you think. Does the Fed let the market crash before the election hurting Trump? Or do they keep it pumping to protect their tech and Wall Street buddies, but potentially help Trump? What are they going to do? Leave me a comment and let me know what you think below. Give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Either way, I wanna hear what you have to say. Leave me a comment down below. And that's it, that's what I got for you today. To your success, I'm out.